The following video contains spoilers. I honestly, I spoil the entire game, so don't watch unless you don't plan on playing it. The Screaming Woods is a game based on the well-known creepypasta, The Rake. It begins with our hero, Blake, who I named D-Bell on account of Drake Bell is a fucking man's man. D-Bell is a 16-year-old film student who lives in America. His mother, a maid, refuses to feed D-Bell as his friends will be here soon and they've all planned a trip to the woods for months now. Your friends arrive, consisting of Ralph, the dorky Evangelion reject, Kate, the potential love interest, Tech, the creepy redhead kid, Jared, the token stoner and cameraman, and Joe. Honestly, no one gives a shit about Joe. You talk of your plans, Ralph is being a bitch as usual, and you head off to the woods. There you meet an elderly man with a nice purple hat, and he tells our heroes that they're all fucking stupid and should piss off. They don't. Setting up camp, you find a broken cell phone with a SIM card. The SIM card is a picture of a super fucking scary creature that instantly spooks the gang and they decide to leave. Nope, oh, too bad the force won't let them and the path they came from leads nowhere. Night falls and spooky noises happen. The token stoner hightails it, dies, and d Bell could give two shits and he jacks his camera and the rest of the gang watches the video he recorded. It's now too spooky to be outside anymore because they saw a scary thing on the video and they all go inside in the tent. Noises happen and our dear friend Joe books it and is never seen or heard from again in the entirety of the game. I really have no idea what happened to that guy. Ralph is a little bitch as always and hightails it too. Whatever. D-Bell, Kate, and Tack all join forces and try to make their own run for it. Upon leaving, they are confronted with the spookiest motherfucking thing they have ever witnessed. After dying a few times to this creature, you get the fuck out and find a log cabin. Inside, you find the dead residents and a note talking about how a creature was stalking them and wouldn't let them leave. You turn a lever, a bridge lowers, and you make your way to an abandoned town. Oh fuck, the pub's closed. After some random filler puzzle bullshit, you enter a house and oh my god, a giant skinny monster! This motherfucker chases you around for a while, you open the pub, it fucks off, and then you'll leave the next morning alone to see if the things are safe. Whilst doing so, you find Ralph about to fall off a bridge, save his sorry ass, and then the bridge collapses. Well, fuck. Continuing on, you find a cave and inside you find a whole nest of the monsters you've been running from. Upon finally managing to get through the long adventure in the cave, you finally find an exit. Oh, it's a giant monster. Cool. That, that's neat. You were given an option to save Ralph or run off without him. You choose to save him because you're in the bee's knees and it's the only proper thing to do. But also, there's really, it doesn't change anything, I don't think. You literally don't do anything after you hit it, you just keep running. It, you don't have to go back or anything, it's just... Whatever. After leaving the cave, you come upon a beaten up Tack. Well, it looks like your pub wasn't so safe after all. You patch up Tack with a nearby first aid kit and find another cave. Inside the cave, you find Kate and two other random fellows locked up in a cage. Because you can't be bothered, you leave them and run away from the cave. Seriously. Upon leaving the cave, you are chased by a giant monster dog because fuck it, why not? The old man with the purple hat drives up in a sick ride to save you, the car is flipped over, the man is killed faster than 50 cent hamburger, and you run away to a random huge mansion in the middle of the woods. Time for some random generic mansion bullshit. After dealing with the generic bullshit consisting of Latin to English translator books, piano puzzles, and stuff stuck in a fireplace, you come across a dungeon with a few trapped individuals who are stereotypically high and they don't give a fuck of what's going on. Flipping a switch, you set loose a monster to eat them and Ralph questions your character. Fuck you, Ralph. More generic mansion bullshit. This time consisting of colored chemicals, orbs, and some silly number puzzles. That's some fun shit right there. You find a golden coin, and after some Latin to English translation skills, you realize you must throw it in the wishing well outside. Upon doing so, you are transported to some underground waterway, where a morality conversation is initiated. Here it is. I don't know. What are we doing anyways? Let's just get away from this nightmare castle. I think we should just give up. What do you mean, give up? In our lives now, so it won't be so horrific or painful death. Oh. <gasps> Oh my god, I want to do that. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, yes! What are you saying?! Maybe Tack is right. Maybe we will never get out of here. This is the only way out. We can drown peacefully in the water. What's wrong with you both?! We can't just give up?! End it now. Shit I've ever seen! <laughs> oh, 
this is great. This, this, I take it back. This is a great game. Once you realize that for some reason killing Debo off wasn't the best idea, you make your way up to a room that has a few doors in it. All of them but one doesn't kill you. That's neat. After going through a really dark labyrinth, you open the last door and you make your way into a room with some really weird red-headed guy. He speaks of how there is no hope, and if you respond properly like you should, you jump off a cliff and kill yourself. If you fuck up and don't kill yourself, you can climb up the rope and leave. Either way, our new redhead friend kills himself because fuck it, why not? Back in the mansion, you find a sacred keystone, and with those cool colored chemicals you found, you open up a portal, use a keystone, and find your way into some place that can only be described as some random guy's interpretation of RPG Maker Hell. It is here you find cultists and the story of the game unravels. The monsters that have been wrecking your day since you came here are known as the Dios. They are beings that existed before the dinosaurs. They were also wiped out just like the dinosaurs a meteor. The cultists wish to end mankind through some unexplained means and bring the Dios to their former glory as owners of the world. Cool. But fuck that, you're D-Bell and don't stand for that bullshit. For no real reason, a random Dios comes up, chews up a cultist, everyone flips shit and you find yourself back at the mansion. Oh hey Kate, you find Kate in a cage, but before saving her you pick up a sword and fucking throw it into the head of a giant Dios and that's the highlight of the game in its entirety. Seriously. Fucking awesome. That's that's the coolest thing. You chuck a sword into its skull. That's just neat. After saving Kate, you run into the cultists again, who are all up in your face. You say fuck off and somehow explode the mansion to a roaring green and red inferno. Seriously, I have no idea how that happened, just look at this. We have to stop you, or insane! Huh. <laughs> what are you gonna do? This What the hell did you do? No! What have you done? What did you do? Seriously, you made- what the fuck have you done? Are you- what? You've made the fires of Christmas come down upon the mansion. QUICKLY, DISCIPLES! And we have but two minutes to get out of here before- why, why two minutes? Once this happens, you have two minutes, which for some reason translates to one minute and twenty seconds, to leave the mansion before something happens. Not really sure what exactly. I mean, I thought it was the mansion was going to get burned down, but I leave the mansion and I was sitting outside and it went down and I, I still died anyway. I'm not sure what. Anyway, you leave through the canals on a boat and then you're safe. All's good and stuff. Neat. You wind up in a hospital two days later with Tack in bed. You're all around him, just staring at him. You're all remorseful about what happened, mourning over the loss of Jared and the fact that nobody found Joe again. But hey, that's the good ending. Yeah, neat. That, yeah, that, that, that was, that's the Screaming Woods. Excellent. Now, personal opinion time. The Screaming Woods was obviously laced with grammatical issues, but that's just beating a dead horse by mentioning that. Despite the fact that I did not particularly enjoy the game, I would still like to offer a word of advice to the creator. Before releasing a game to the general public on the internet, just try to find a beta tester too to work out some of the issues I found with the game. From the poor grammar, which I believe is due to the fact that English is not your main language, that's totally fine by the way, to the irritations of the monster's randomized movements, which really made it impossible half the time. I had to go through many different save files. It was kind of fucking weird, man. To scares being made so incredibly poorly. A lot more effort could have been put into those. All the way down to avatar and sprite choices. When you go with avatars, try to stick to the same theme of art. Don't go between different styles. I, I saw one guy look like from anime, another guy looked like straight from the RPG Maker default list. And Jared's sprite was ripped straight from Pokemon, for fuck's sakes. I mean, it's, it, you had to all over the place. Just, you know, throwing that out there. There's a lot wrong with the game, but you can still learn what you did wrong and you can improve from that. So, hey, there's the silver lining right there. From, you know, my own personal opinion, you should start by playtesting your own game thoroughly. Make sure the puzzles flow well, the monster encounters are not unfair to such a huge degree that it takes you out of the game because you have to look at the game over screen, which by the way, that game over screen was totally not centered. There was a black bar on the right side, it was, it bugged me man. I saw the game over screen a lot, <laughs> I just, just throwing it out there. But uh, anyway, after you've played the game, you've found all the bugs that you can, correct them yourself and polish it the best you could, have someone else play it, take their feedback and work from that. Prove where you can and just keep working on it until it's a product of entertainment that you can be proud of. Not, um, this. Alright, that's all I had to say. Cool. Outro time. Take it.